So in this part of the module, we'll start working our way through uh, a list of the exceptions that can stop your code from running. So these are not the ones that stop your code from starting, like syntax errors and import errors and indentation errors and so on. These are things that your code will start running and then it will trip over at some point as it's running. So first of all, and again, one of the most common ones you come across are name errors. And then there's a more specialized version, which is actually a little bit subtle, called unbound local error, you might come across. So name errors are the exception that is caused when you try to refer to some sort of identifier, by which I mean a variable name or a function name, um, and it's not defined at the point at which you're trying to use it. And so Python says, I don't know what you mean by blog, whatever it is. Um, and so it raises a name error. So 99 times out of 100, this is just a typo, um, or it's a failure to import something. So you've tried using SQRT and you forgot to do from numpy import SQRT. Um, and so it throws a name error. Um, but sometimes it can be down to um, that you've defined some variables in some branch of the logic of your code and not in other branches, and then you try to refer to it later on, and depending how your code's executed, that variable or that function may or may not be defined, and so you might throw up a, a name error. Those are a little bit harder to go and spot. They're a sort of logic error, but it comes under the same class. So um, here's an example um, where you might get such a problem. So um, uh, we've defined um, uh, a, a variable x, we've done if x is zero, um, result equals true, and then outside that if statement, we try and print result. Well, if you think about what happens here, x is equal to two, right, so x, if x equals equals zero never runs, so then result is never defined, so when I try to print result, it says, I don't know what you mean by result, you haven't defined result, um, and so that's one way it can happen. Um, the unbound local error is a kind of special case you can get when you are using variables inside functions. Um, and it's actually really, although it comes up as an amount called unbound local error, it's really an error of not thinking clearly about what variables you're using inside a function. So here's an example of how it might happen. So outside my function, I define a variable x, and then inside my um, variable, my side for function, I've got this function test, um, I do y equals x. So I create a new variable local to that function called y, and I say give it the value x. Um, and then Python says, oh, well, hang on a second here, I don't know about x inside this function. So it looks outside the function, so it looks at what existed when the function uh, was called, and it says, ah, oh, we've got x equals four, right, okay, so y is equal to the, the same thing as x is. And that's all fine, that's not a bug. It's not good practice, it's not what you should do, but it's not technically a bug. The problem comes on the next line. You try and assign the value five to the variable x. And at this point, Python says, oh, but hang on, x was a variable that existed outside the function and now you're trying to redefine it. And that's where it comes up with this unbound local error. Now the, um, oops, the, the actual problem here is that um, what you sh well, the mistake that you've been made is you've referred to this variable x inside your function, but you never passed it into the function as a parameter. So the golden rule is that if you want to use a variable inside a function, pass it in as a parameter. And that way you know that, um, you've created, when you do that, you've said, okay, I'm going to create this parameter x, which is now going to be local inside this function. It's only going to be the thing x is only going to be the thing inside the function. And you can redefine it as you like, it doesn't matter. Um, so the, the rule is don't refer to things that you haven't passed in as parameters. The exception to that is things which are genuinely constants, by which I mean things like the speed of light or the charge on an electron. Um, things which you are, where it would be a mistake to try and change them. 
Yeah, so if you say called C the speed of light, and inside a function you suddenly try and do C equals 23, well, probably redefining the speed of light is not a good thing. So if that function's been using the speed of light and you've tried redefining it, that's almost certainly a bug. And so you deserve to get an unbound local error doing that. So bottom line is, if you're going to use a, a variable inside the function, then pass it in as a parameter and you won't have that problem. Okay, I have mentioned in an earlier part of this unit, index error and key errors. So index errors and key errors are both lookup errors and they are caused when you try to index a list or an array or a dictionary, i.e. that's using the square brackets uh, syntax. Um, and then there's some problem with that um, index. So the difference between them is that an index error um, is used when you are doing something which you index like a list or an array where the index is telling you about the ordered position of the thing you're trying to retrieve in the in the list or the array. Um, whereas a key error happens when you're trying to index something like a dictionary where you're indexing by a label to refer to a particular item. Um, and so the sorting order of the keys doesn't actually tell you anything about the order of the items in the dictionary. The difference is that in a list, item zero is the one before item one, and item one is the one before item two, and so on. So the order in which those integer indexes happen tells you about the order in which they're stored in the list. In a dictionary, things are just stored in the order in which you put them in, and so if you put into the dictionary something and give it a label A, and then, well, it's a bad example, give it something of the example um, D, and the next thing you put into the list is, is, is called something A, and then the next thing that goes in is something O, and then the next thing that goes in is something G, then um, the order in which they're going to be stored is going to be D, and then A, and then O, and then G, and it's got nothing to do with the the way in which you'd sort those names that you're using as the keys. So both of these happen when you're trying to index something with the wrong, something that's just wrong for trying to index either a number that uh, a number that's too big for your list or your array or a key that doesn't exist in your dictionary. Um, so here, for example, I've created an empty list and I try indexing it with zero. So I ask for the first element of an empty list. Well, it's an empty list and so the index zero is out of range. And so it gives me an index error. And then in this example, I've created an empty dictionary and I've asked it for the element called A and it tells me, well, it's a key error. There is no element called A in that dictionary. Um, and so that's what's going on. That's what a key error is. Um, note that the thing with a dictionary is it doesn't matter what the type of the thing you're using as the key. So dictionaries, you don't have to have strings, the keys, you can have any, not quite anything you like. You can um, have anything that Python can um, basically work out a code and um, a storage code for it. Um, so I can store uh, things in a dictionary using integers as a key. It's probably a bit confusing to do that. So I wouldn't generally recommend doing this, but it's legal Python. Um, and so in this example, I also get a key error because it's just telling me that there is no key zero in my dictionary. OK, another one you might come across is an attribute error. So in Python, attributes is where you have variable dot and then an attribute name. So some attributes can be functions. And in Python, when an attribute is something you can call like a function, it's called a method. Um, this is to do with um, the fact that Python is what's called an object oriented programming language. Um, and if you're a keen programmer, you can go and find all about object oriented programming. But for um, most people, all you need to know is that if you have an attribute and you can call it then like a function, then we call it a method. Or, that's, that's just what it's known as. Um, but they can also be attributes can also tell you about information about the variable. So, for example, in a numpy array, we would have an attribute dot shape and another one dot size. 
And those attributes are telling you about um, how big the array is and how the how many rows and columns and um, uh, potentially higher dimension um, uh, values you have in the elements you have in the array. So if you have a, a two dimensional array that is 10 by five, so 10 rows by five columns, then it would have a shape of 10 comma five and it would have a size of 50. Um, and you can get at it from whatever you call the array, I don't know, a dot shape and a dot size. Um, if you try accessing something which is not an attribute, then you get an attribute error. So in this case, I've tried calling um, a, a, a variable, which is a string, and I've tried calling a method. So in other words, an attribute that you can call like a function. Um, and I've tried using the one called lowercase. Presumably I'm trying to turn it into a, a lowercase string. Um, the problem is that lowercase is not a method of a string. Um, in fact, what I wanted to do was use lower, not lowercase. Um, so this was a, a not understanding how to use the string methods, um, but it's reported as an attribute error. So in other words, the thing after the dot is not recognized um, for the, 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 the whatever quantity it is. Another one you're going to get quite often is a type error. So a type error happens when you try to do something with a variable that's not compatible with the data type of, the, of that variable. So for example, you try to index the scalar type. So you try to index an integer or um, you try to use a string where an integer um, is, is the thing that you, you should have instead. So here, for example, I've created a integer x called value two, and now I'm asking it for the first element of x and it's going well but x doesn't have any elements it doesn't make sense to talk about the elements of an integer and so it's a type error so whenever you get a type error you want to be thinking okay i'm trying to use that variable in a way that's not appropriate for what is actually stored in that variable um so um here's a, another slightly interesting example so i create a list um uh, call it x, and I ask it for the first as a string um, element of x. Now you might think, oh, well, that should return an index error because there is no index first because indexes of strings should be, uh, indexes of lists should be integers, they shouldn't be strings. Um, you know, it's like I'm trying to use x like it's a dictionary, but it's a list. Um, uh, the reason that gives me a type error is because the it doesn't get as far as even trying to work out whether or not that index existed it's gone and said well hang on a second there lists can't have string indexes so the problem is that it's the index the thing you're trying to index with has got the wrong type so it's a type error um and that's why we get a type error and not an index error um okay another very very common one you're going to find is value errors and I'm going to mention another specialized version of value errors, which is to do with something called Unicode errors, which you might also see sometimes. So a value error happens whenever you try to do something with a variable and the value is not suitable for whatever it is you're trying to do. So value errors can happen for a whole wide range of situations. Um, but generally what's going on is it's the result of some bad input into a function. Um, so um, it's the sort of thing you're going to get if you try doing um, um, uh, uh, using an out of range parameter or you have a function which is supposed to go and take either a string one, two or three and you give it a string five and it'll say, OK, well, it's a string, so it's not a type error, but it's not one of the strings I was expecting. So it's a value error. So generally value errors are an indication you've got some bad input going into a function. Um, OK, so um, here, for example, I'm trying to convert the string 12 to an integer. Now, of course, as a human being, you'd read that and go, oh, yes, but of course, 12 means um, the number 12. But of course, as far as Python doesn't actually speak English, um, at least not by default. And so it doesn't recognize the string 12 as being anything other than 
a sequence of a T, a W, an E, an L, a V, and another E. And he goes, well, I don't know how to turn that into an integer. So it raises a value error because the thing you've tried to supply um, can't be converted into um, an integer. Um, the reason it's not a type error is because what you could do is do int brackets quotes and then the number one and two end quotes. And then it would go, oh, well, hang on, the string one and two is the number 12. So it could do that. So the problem here is the value of the string, not the fact it's a string. Unicode errors, and actually they come as flavors of Unicode decode error and Unicode encode errors. Um, so these are special types of value errors. The main time you're going to go and see them is when you're trying to read data um, to and from particularly binary files on disk, or you're trying to interact with another program. And the reason you're getting them is to do with how Python deals with international characters in the string. So if you need to have like an umlaut or a circumflex, or you need to have Cyrillic letters or Greek letters in your string, Python can do that. Python can have a string full of Greek or Cyrillic letters, um, and it's perfectly legal as a string. But internally, what Python is doing in order to represent those characters is it's storing them in a thing called Unicode. Unicode is a, a standard for storing um, a vast range, practically every character you might ever want to go and have, and probably quite a lot you don't ever want to have um, in a consistent sort of way. The problem is when you then need to go and exchange that information in Unicode with a program that doesn't understand Unicode, what you have to do is you have to then um, encode the Unicode into whatever correct binary format is needed by that other program. And then when you read it back out again, you need to decode it. And if that process of encoding or decoding goes wrong, you get those Unicode exceptions. So you'll tend to see them when you try reading a binary file in a way that you shouldn't be trying to read it, or maybe writing a binary file that you're trying to read it. So the reason we mention it here is just sometimes you can go and get that if you're trying to open and read a text file, um, or what you think is a text file. If you give it the wrong file name, it's actually a binary file. You're probably going to hit some Unicode errors. Um, so you can actually force it to create a Unicode error so what I've done here is I've created a byte string. So that's where I've got that letter B in front of the opening quotes. That means I'm creating a binary uh, representation of that data. And I'm saying, OK, go and try and decode this into a Python string um, using a particular way of coding, the, of decoding the data for Unicode. And it's come back and said, that doesn't work. Um, and so you get a Unicode decode error. So runtime errors. Uh, runtime errors then are um, another one you come across in many, many different situations. And again, it's very hard to go and give you a concrete guide as to how you should go and deal with these. In general, what it's implying is that some function has just failed to work correctly. Um, so usually it means that there's been something wrong with the input into the function. Um, so runtime errors are a generic error that means something went wrong um, when I tried running, um, it's not to do with bad code, really. It's not to do um, with it, you know, using it inappropriately. It, it's, it might be to do with using it inappropriately. It's not to do with um, wrong variable types or value, things that are going to generate value errors or type errors or anything else. There's just something that's gone wrong with the way this code is running. Um, and so an example here, um, this is using SciPy optimized curve fit, which we'll look at towards the end of semester one in the module. Um, and curve fit is just used to go and um, uh, fit some data. Um, and so I've just um, forced the issue here by making an example, which is going to generate a problem where curve fit gives up trying to fit the data. Um, and so what happens here is it returns a, a runtime error and tells me, oh, I couldn't do this. I gave up. Um, uh, and actually, in this particular case, um, it's because I've messed up um, how I call curve fit. Um, and unit five of this series gives a whole exact set of examples of debugging curve fit um, and what it means when you hit uh, various errors using curve fit. So if you're here trying to find out what to go and do with a runtime error caused by curve fit, go look at unit five. That's where you want to be.